Hi, I'm Jack, and welcome back, because today I'm going to give you guys a video that I've been trying to make for a while now, but I've decided because of the recent announcement with another season of the show coming, I'm deciding to give you guys a review for Cobra Kai Season 5. I cannot wait to talk to you guys about this one. I've been trying to do it for a while, because I do really love the show, and I wanted to give this video to you guys. So with that said, let's get started. Season 5 follows the aftermath of Season 4, where after the shocking loss at the All-Valley Tournament in Season 4, Terry Silver is going to surprisingly big lengths to expand the Cobra Kai Empire and make it the biggest karate dojo in town. However, with Kreese behind bars and Johnny Lawrence spending time fixing all the damage he's caused, it is up to Daniel LaRusso to team up with an old friend to fight this war against Cobra Kai once again. I really like Cobra Kai. It's one of my favorite shows right now. It's one of my favorite Netflix shows. I love the story about Johnny Lawrence and he decides to bring back Cobra Kai and it leads to all the stuff that ends up happening on the show here. It is a really good legacy sequel where it does a really good job of progressing the story of the original characters from the original trilogy and so is establishing newer characters with the teenagers and seeing them face about growing up and being better at karate while also dealing with the rise of Cobra Kai. It is a very bingeable and highly watchable show, even at its lowest point. And I was super excited to watch season five back when it first came out. And I really loved the characters. And season four was my favorite season of the show, which made me even more excited for the fifth season. So now that I've seen all of season five, I really liked it. Although it is not the best season of the show by any means, it is still very watchable. I love how we see the characters go do whatever it takes to take on Cobra Kai led by Terry Silver. To kick off with the positives, this is the season where the stakes are at its highest. Where with every season, we always have the stakes going up where characters are resulting in very much big injuries throughout the season with the actions that take place. This is the season where characters are in the most danger. Now that Terry Silver is running Cobra Kai, and he's the big villain. He's a very intelligent, dangerous foe for our characters. And we see characters face with two options when it comes to their consequences with their actions. They either get really injured, or they could possibly die trying to do what they are trying to accomplish. And at every episode, I was always on the edge of my seat wondering, oh, what's going to happen with this character? Is this character going to be okay? Is this character going to bite the dust? Is the character going to lose in a fight? It's at its highest this season, and Terry Silver shows that he is the best villain in the entire series. He is menacing, he's intelligent, he's ferocious. And Thomas Ian Griffith plays Terry Silver so well with his line delivery, the mannerisms, how calculating, and he really shows all the things that make Terry Silver a very ferocious bad guy for our characters to have to fight in battle and to stop Cobra Kai from getting bigger than it is now. And he always has 10 steps ahead plans with all these characters where when we're hoping that something good's going to come out of what Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence are trying to accomplish. Terry Silver pulls the rug out from under them and reveals, oh, plot twist. I actually knew you were going to do this. And something bad happens. It happens a lot in the middle to back half the season. And he is an excellent villain. And I was so invested in the story of seeing them try to take down Terry Silver because he is by far the best villain on the entire show. And it's crazy how big of a boost he got from being the villain in The Karate Kid Part 3, where he was a very over-the-top and crazy villain, and then the show acknowledges why he was like that in the fourth season. And then season five, we see him at its absolute dangerous potential yet, yeah, where he really comes off as a serious threat with a whole lot of urgency and a whole lot of stakes. Another really good thing about the season is that season five is where relationships and rivalries really hit a big turning point for the characters on the show. Where after seasons of seeing McGill and Robbie hate each other, beat each other up, fight in combat, and so is with Sam and Tori, this is the season where those relationships and rivalries with characters throughout the season really reach ahead where we're seeing big payoff and development happen with these characters in a natural way. Where McGill and Robbie I like and I love just what the season does with those two where after all this time the rivalry finally reaches an end and now they've become friends and how they 
let that whole thing go. How they make up with each other is really good. And so is the whole Sam and Tori thing where ever since season two, they fought each other. They hated each other. They resent one another. This is the season where all of that changes. And I love what the season does with Tori played very well by Peyton List where we see her be at her most sympathetic out of all the times we've seen her over the course of the show. And so as with Robbie, where this is the most sympathetic we've seen him be on the show in a very long time, where it's like now we see him against Cobra Kai. He's helping Daniel LaRusso, Johnny Lawrence, and them do whatever it takes to stop Terry Silver. And so as relationships in general, McGill has a little subplot with his father, and so as Sam and the relationship between her and Tori and her and McGill. How does that affect her? And while the season definitely doesn't have as much of the teenagers as much as I would have liked, and this is the least they've been in a season of the show, I still like what it does with the characters. And by far, my favorite character of the season, once again, is William Zabka as Johnny Lawrence, who's funny with his one-liners and how we see his relationship with Carmen grow, how he still will do whatever it takes to stop Cobra Kai from growing, protect the kids, and just see him just grow as a person. And his development this season is satisfying. And another standout character this season is Chosen, who is hilarious seeing his dynamic with Daniel Russo as they both go out to stop Terry Silver. There's a lot of really good moments with Chosen. He has some of the best moments on the show with the humor, with the action, how he has a much more violent and grotesque way of taking down Terry Silver than what Daniel Russo would have wanted. And how... They play off of each other and go on this quest to stop Terry Silver. It's really fun. I had a lot of fun with that whole little storyline and aspect of season five. And just as I'd hoped, the action sequences are still really good. The show has some of the best action sequences I've seen for a TV show recently. In the first half of the season, it is a little bit rocky with the way it's edited and put together. But from the middle of the season all the way till the end, the action sequences here are awesome. Some of them actually rank among some of the best fight sequences on the entire show, especially in the finale in the last half of the season where Hawk fights Kenny and Daniel LaRusso fights Terry Silver and McGill versus Robbie. There is a lot of really good action sequences. Yet again, this shows why Cobra Kai does a good job of karate, how they film the karate sequences, and just the outcome and what the characters do to end the fight and beat their opponent. It is really satisfying. There's a lot of really good stuff here in terms of the action sequences where Cobra Kai, once again, nails it with the choreography. The last half of season five is some of the best stuff to ever come out of Cobra Kai, where the stakes are at its highest. Terry Silver is the best villain on the show. All the characters are trying to contribute and trying to start the downfall of Cobra Kai and Terry Silver and what they will do to accomplish that goal and all the stuff that's happening and trying to prevent them from doing so. All of it's good. Everybody in the cast is really good. I love, once again, Ralph Macchio as Daniel LaRusso here and William Zabka as Johnny Lawrence and Zolo as McGill. Everybody here is still really good for the fifth season and I really liked how they use a lot of the characters this season. And the back half is really satisfying. It has some of the best stuff to ever come out of the show with the way it wraps up the season, where it starts to feel like we're starting to build to a natural end point for the show after this season. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with season six because of where we ended with season five with that little cliffhanger that Kreese has broken out of prison. And I am really looking forward to seeing how the characters react to that after how the rest of season five has played out. However, this isn't the best season of the show where with Cobra Kai, the seasons tend to get better than the one before it. But season four is still the best season of the show for me because season five had a bit of a slow, a rocky start at first. It kicks off with a lot of these different things going on, whereas Terry Silver is trying to expand Cobra Kai, Daniel LaRusso and Chosen trying to find allies or find ways to stop Terry Silver. And then there's the whole McGill storyline where he's trying to find his father. And some of the storylines here definitely were half-baked. They didn't expand as much of it in the first half of the show. I was pretty underwhelmed with the whole McGill storyline because season four's ending made it seem like it was going to be the next big thing. And then in general, it just came and went after two episodes. I wanted a little bit more out of it, but I understood we had to get McGill back in the valley so that we can have the main story really kick off. And then relationships once again the sam and mcgill relationship they have a little relationship issue there and it's another thing that didn't feel like it was adding too much to what's overall happening here it does feel like we're a little regressing what's happening between the two that season 
And then they introduced Mike Barnes, who was a character in Karate Kid Part 3. And I was really curious to see what they do with Mike Barnes in Season 5 of Cobra Kai. And in the end, it's okay. Seeing him in the finale was cool, but I thought they were going to use him a lot more. And I feel like they should have used more of Mike Barnes in the season because the way he's utilized was probably one of the more underwhelming aspects of the season because I was really excited to see an older Mike Barnes in the show because the show does a good job with legacy characters. And I do think they could have done more of Mike Barnes. There are ideas there that could have been really fascinating, but they didn't do too much with it. He's in two episodes. And although he does something really cool in the finale, as a whole, I kind of wish they used a little bit more of Mike Barnes. And season five also gives us less of the teenagers this season, where they focus a lot on the conflict between Daniel, Johnny, and Chosen trying to take down Terry Silver. And then when we get to the teenagers, they don't get as much to do this season. Season Some characters were nerfed. Some characters definitely get more than others to do. Some are more important than others. And it definitely shows because one of the biggest things about Cobra Kai were the kid characters of the older characters mentoring them to be better people and being strong with karate while also using it as a force for good. And this season, there's not as much of it in season five compared to the other seasons because they were focusing so much on the war against Terry Silver that we didn't get as much of the teenagers until really a certain point in the season where when we get them, it's cool. But I wanted a little bit more out of them this season, but they do get some good stuff to do in the last three to four episodes of the season. This is also a season where we're starting to see the show starting to repeat itself a bit, where throughout all five seasons, it's progression, it's characters going back and forth on liking or hating each other and the conflicts that brew between them. But season five definitely starts to point out that we're starting to run in circles and that it's starting to get closer to its resolution point, which it will with season six. And I do think that I'm wondering what they do with season six because most of the characters by the end of season five have reached a new point where most of them are done with Cobra Kai. Most of them are no longer villains. And because of how things play out in the end where Daniel LaRusso, they all take down Terry Silver and Cobra Kai. And so I'm left here wondering, now that Kreese is broken out of prison, what are they going to do with season six? Because... It feels like it's starting to reach a natural ending point in a way because we're starting to repeat certain things where characters, once again, are they going to help out? Are they not going to help out? Do they hate each other? Do they like each other? Conflicts brewing between everybody. And so as some of the drama aspects is definitely at its highest with dramatic moments here, whether it's over the top or not. And I do hope season six does a good job of bringing the whole show together and wrap it up on a high note because while the season is still really good, really enjoy it once again, it's definitely showing some cracks and some of the issues that the show tends to have. All in all, I enjoyed season five. It's not the best season. It's definitely not as good as season four, but for what it is, the back half of the season is some of the strongest entries within Cobra Kai. And I love how it progresses some of the characters and the relationships and rivalries they have. And once again, it's an entertaining show with some great action sequences that's highly bingeable. And I'm really excited to see how they close out the show at season six. So in the end, I'm going to give Cobra Kai season five an A-. minus. I was so afraid they're going to cancel this show because it's been several months since this season premiered, but they announced season six and I could not be any happier. Yes! Because I love the show, one of my favorite Netflix shows, and it's one of the best legacy sequels ever created. So I am so happy we're getting one more season and I'm hoping they really bring everything together on a really good note because I love the show and I hope they bring everything to a very satisfying resolution in season six when it comes out because for what season five was, it's still enjoyable. And while it's not the best season, it has some issues, I still think the highs in the charm of Cobra Kai is still present once again. And once again, it's another season of Cobra Kai that I really like and continues to be one of my favorite shows out there. So yeah. That's my review for Cobra Kai Season 5. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to know your thoughts on Cobra Kai. And give me your excitement level for Season 6. I'd love to know that down below in the comment section. Stay tuned for some upcoming videos that I have planned very soon. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below at the bottom of the screen and in the description below. So please go do that while you're at it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And stay tuned for more. 